Hello everybody, Martorius Martizzi here. So, um, looks like we got some downtime coming up here. Uh, a little less riding, I noticed a bunch more videos out lately on upgrades and maintenance and everybody getting to know their machines better. So, that's kind of what we're doing on uh, a couple of them. The XMR 2019 Sport uh, 64 inch. We're going to start plugging away at this now. It's pretty much been stock. We were riding it around for a while, just seeing how much we liked it and whatnot. So, um, and we love it. We just think it's worth throwing some some dough and effort into it and getting it up to snuff. And I believe we got um, some protection going on there, different parts there um, on the underside, bumper wise, some tree kickers, sliders that just came in right here. We're gonna open those up and get those on and. Um, yeah, usually what we do is we ride and play around on some machines before we put a bunch of money into them and, and invest in them. And uh, kind of ride them a little bit light at the start just to see, but this one got clipped down low and I'll show you where that is in a minute. And that's why we got these coming on right away. So then we're going to add some uh, extra guards in that underneath on the A-arms front and back and uh, a little bit on the belly as well. So stay tuned, we're going to work on that stuff. We've got a ton of projects coming up. A lot of stuff is lined up between uh, this one, the X3, even the Ace we're going to play with, the Scrambler we're going to play with. Um, so there's going to be quite a few things getting ready for riding and whatnot. And uh, we're also going to do some work on the flat deck trailer and the car hauler as well. Just to advance them all now that we know what machines we're going to stick with for a while. Um, just got a bunch of different stuff going on. So stay tuned. We'll get around to it all. And maybe squeak a little isolation riding in here and there. If it's right or wrong to. Or if it's allowed anymore. Depending on where. So um, it's, it's changing every week. So we'll kind of go day by day. And see what we're allowed to do. And not allowed to do. But in the meantime. I'm going to have some fun just upgrading these machines. Getting the protection on them. So that we can push and ride them a little harder. And not worry so much about damaging this and that. I mean, it's, it's going to happen no matter what you're getting damaged stuff, but a lot of it's preventable if you have the right gear and accessories on. And that's another thing too, accessory wise, we need uh, to upgrade like just our overall storage capacities and stuff like that. So when we do go, we're just better prepped. I mean, we were for quite some time. Now we change machines and we got to re get back in line there. So I like hitting and getting in the bush and not really worrying about a whole lot. If you got to work on them, you got to work on them. But it's nice to have the majority of the stuff in a way to get out of the bush too, right? So that being said, then we also got to test our sand gear out in the X3. Make sure those rims and tires are all set up to work right on the XDS because they came off the uh, XRS. So lots of stuff is lined up. Uh, stay tuned. On this video, I'm just going to work on the... Um, the tree kickers or rock sliders, whatever people call them, and we'll get those on the sides and uh, maybe show you a little bit about how that was to install, how easy or hard it was, and some tips and tricks and all that. But for now, I just want to give an update on what's going on for the next bit and what to look forward to. All right, here we go. All right, so this is what I was talking about here. So with the XMR, you get the um, the extended kind of mud flares right because we're assuming we're going to be mudding like crazy so we're going to need the extra little bit of flare so these are the the extras that come on some of the sports some not um, and then these are the extra as you can see here they just attach and kind of filter in with the uh, the other guys but what happens down here is hopefully everybody can see this quite well so if you look here at the very bottom you'll see some cracking going on. So what happens is because you got the extra flares, you've got also extra thinner, flimsier plastic to catch on everything too. So we didn't have the sliders on here yet to deflect everything off. So if you can see, we must have, have clipped something, maybe a stump or a rock or something. Basically what happened here, is it just kind of broke away from from the other one right so we just want to prevent some of that from happening i know it's going to happen but i think the sliders or the you know the kickers would have for sure bumped those protected that so i'll just get this thing mended back up together as secretly as possible 
so it looks smooth and then we're going to install these these rock slider tree kickers whatever you want to call them so yeah like you say you know something could clip here potentially too and bust these back it's just they're kind of stiff and uh, they flare out pretty good so you don't you, you never know what you're going to catch and you can't stop it all definitely not um, but we're going to put those on just it just pr helps protect the under underside a bit if they hang a bit lower you know just protect all the times I like to when you're in the forest and stuff because this is a tiny bit bigger 64 inch like I sometimes I just pur purposely use them but if you notice the doors stick out a bit here too so see how they kind of bow out right and if you can get those sliders down there that also help a lot of times that you might be bumping your doors and kind of be a shame to kill these doors on the side here and next thing you know they're not latching properly or hinging properly because you're smoking them all the time so yeah we'll throw those on and slice this box open here and see what they look like and let's get them on see how it looks then we'll try them out and see how they work Instructions, the best ever. We'll see about that set mess there, but sometimes you're bang on, sometimes they really don't help you with much. Sometimes you don't even need them. So, but uh, I don't think their stuff's usually packed pretty darn good. So they do like that. Nothing's banging around in the boxes. Uh, nicely wrapped. Stuggers around around them. Alright, so there we have the first one. What do we have in here? Other than that, we basically got a twin set. So we got some hardware wrapped onto here. Some more hardware wrapped onto here. I see uh, replacement rivets for where we're going to have to drill out the rivets and the floorboards. And um, however, however, we're going to get at this. So I was actually wondering about that. Are they going to send that or do I have to find those somewhere? But no, they're here. So that's pretty cool. So hardware taped onto both of these. Thump thump. And then we got the uh, the other one here. So some good weight to this. I think my machine's already slow enough as it is. It's gonna be even slower. Like some serious weight to these puppies. I'm actually shocked. It might be dent resistant. Well, I'll take a look at it. See what we got. I know because I know some of the aftermarket stuff you get, especially the OEM, can be some really thin, thin butt stuff, you know. So there's definitely some pretty darn good weight to these. So you got your bolt holes. Like I said, everything's packaged nice to protect it. So this is that textured black to match, uh, like on the cage. So yeah. These are interesting. They curl around. So this is the back. This is the front. So, yeah. Pretty excited about this. I'm just curious myself how far do they um, actually come off of the unit and protect? Or are they just protecting the sides or will they help protect that uh, the rear fenders like I was saying where it cracked them? If they don't exactly do that, I might be doing something on here to uh, extend them and bring them out a bit. We'll see. Check it out. But yeah, I'm shocked by the, by the weight of them, to be honest. Doesn't seem like an overly thick tubing wall or nothing, but maybe it's probably all the, the mounting plates and whatnot. In Canada, we don't have as ton of the aftermarket as you guys have rolling down in the U.S. Um, especially uh, Canada, there's not a whole lot for that. Razor, there's not a huge amount of Razor aftermarket up here, but it is up here. It is trickling out here. Um, 
So it was doable, but sometimes it's nice just to get the stuff and get it on and go from there. And I find we end up selling and moving the units on half the time sooner than spending all the money on it. And I'm not sponsored by anybody uh, in particular out there that sends me anything in the mail every day. So I can throw it on all these units and let you all know how they go. Down the road, hopefully, maybe, you never know, right? So, anyways, we're gonna get these pup. We're gonna get these pups on. Wow. I'm still, I'm still shocked by the weight, man. It's pretty serious, like, this might take like 510 horsepower off the machine. But if I put this on, the other guards and whatnot, it's, I just, I'm gonna, you know, no more passengers. Gotta keep the weight down. It's just me. Alright, let's get this done. Alright, so let's go over the hardware. We've got a bunch of rivets. Some bobbin rivets. A few bolts. We've got six bolts here. Two Allen head. They come with a washer to go down the tubing to uh, just create a little more of a flange there. As these guys are already pretty heavy duty. So they just get the uh, hex bolts on there. And then for the back of each one, we have one of these for each one. So... In total six points to uh, mount and the cool thing about it is that I mean I didn't look at the instructions I'm just gonna bolt these on as long as they're bolted on they're bolted on but I uh, don't think I'll need these nuts or these or the rivets I'm not gonna go underneath and do all that because um, I'm not sure if it was all afterthought or before thought of manufacturing but this plastic plug right here pops out. I don't know if you can barely see it. It sits right there. So I just use a chisel to pop the four little pieces. It actually wiggles off pretty easy. And directly on the other side of that, right here, is the dimple for the top mount. You got the dimple right here for the bottom and the other bottom is right there so if you reach up under the skid plate and floorboards you feel the back of this tubing of the frame, main frame where you're going to put those uh, six receiver receivers for the bolts on the other side so my only thing is um, where this kicker comes through because of the extended mud flares on the XMR version I might have to just chisel out a bit of uh, plastic there. We'll see. I, I believe I will. Just have to take a hair out. Shouldn't be a big deal. Um, just do a nice job of it. And then, I'll just show you underneath here. There's some things to think about. So, considering this has not been ridden very hard at all, as you see these stock uh, floorboards that come on these guys. Oh, they make them look kind of thicker by the flanges and whatnot, but if you reach around the corner, they're thinner. They kind of make them look like they're a full quarter inch or more, but they are just a true thinner 3 16 kind of thing. Um, so I'm assuming that's what all the extra rivets were for if you bang these out and you can reach behind and do all that. But it's pretty easy because this divot right here has you can just you can get to everything from the back side so it's nice and easy I'll show you if I can get the camera up there so see right right there you can't really get in there and see it but that's where it is yeah you kind of see the hole right there so you can get to them that's where those uh those big bolt washers or nut washers sit on the back side. They're kind of concave, so they sit against the frame, the roundness of the frame. And so since I can get to that one and that one, we're just gonna go there. And then I want to show you on down here. If you look here at the front of the bulkhead at the bottom, a couple things. On lots of these these machines, it's like this, but where you got your shears down here for your, your A-arms they're always exposed and hanging down a little bit more so take a look and imagine what are you going to clip when you come riding through you kind of rather clip this and be smoking all, all these right so there's a big 
Uh, it's actually pretty thick. It's I, th I believe it's almost a full half inch thick. It comes on the XRC, which is smart. So I ordered that, and it's going to come up there and up the face. The full protection there, and it actually sticks out a little bit past the height of there. So it'll be deeper than these guys sitting here to protect them as well. So these are the last things you want to start smoking. Then everything starts getting out of square and banged out and weaker and cracking. And then you're... Then you wonder why something popped out of nowhere later down the road and it's because it was already stressed out before so so that'll be going on very soon and yeah the ground clearance is awesome here it's crazy my only thing is i know how easy this has been driven for the most part so it's pretty pretty crazy after the minimal riding we've done to have a nice big shatter like that and I also have one here I get it if we rode this like some of the other ones and harder and stuff but definitely not too uh, crazy I don't I don't know if any of the companies skid plates and underbelly plates and floorboards and all that are really all that great if any are let me know I'm curious to know whose are so I always heard that can were on the better side but I'm starting to wonder if they're just about the average Joe's as anybody else's. I know they're, these are broken a few of these on other stuff just by barely clipping anything, so. Uh, the Razor plastics are said to not be so great either, and I actually had pretty darn good luck with mine. With the XP1K, we put that thing through everything, and uh, nothing ever happened, but yeah, here's where that, that belly plate's gonna come up and cover here, so everything we do is gonna be banging and crashing and hitting the air mounts and all that and I just want that out of sight out of mind if it's gonna hit anything first I'd rather hit a hit a nice plate in the way first right so what I'm gonna do here is hole saw out these three points because we can reach the backs now of all three and then uh, set the bolts through and feed them through and get them into those uh, washers and receiving washers there and then just cinch them up see how it goes but yeah I think I'm gonna have to chisel the hair off of there we'll mark that out and then bump that out and then then we'll mount them cinch them up tight so yeah I'll just start dry or drilling these pivot holes here so it's like an inch and an eight or sorry inch and five eighths I know these guys when you uh Instead of going to inch and three quarters, I'm going to stay with inch and five eighths because they do always lean out a little bigger than they're supposed to. So, always plastic, go slow, then you get nice clean edges. If you go too fast, you're just going to be kind of cruising for a mistake. Because the plastic, they will grab and rip your drill and cork it, and then you kind of got a bent plastic, ugly, ugly kind of mess going on. So, like that we're through so you can actually see the frame right there bolts gonna go right through and now we can reach through that side where we punched out that hole and hold that other piece there so nice and clean machines dirty but the hole is nice and clean and then you can file that off if you really want to but yeah so we're gonna do the other two Give this thing a little dry fit, so hit that one and this one now. Go from there. All right, so now I got hole one over there, hole two, and number three right there. So pretty nice and easy to get to. Now we'll find out how fun it is to actually hold this up and feed everything through. Okay, so as you can see here, we um, what I want to get is this middle one in here. I'm going to bolt this one through light so that way I can kind of rock her back and forth. I can tell uh, this one's going to be a nice fit. This one's going to pop in. What's holding me back right now is like I said this flare is in the way so it's probably 
these would fit on the Sport and the, uh, the uh, XRC's better because they won't have these extended flares. So I'm just going to mark out, um, we were basically half an inch off and half an inch up it's got to go. So that center there, I'm going to call that my center. Basically chow this out right there and then it should slip up in there no problem. Yeah, so now that I got this marked out, I just kind of did my hole through the bottom of the fender there. Make sure you got your guide hole. And then I'll just shot this out. There you go. So, got a little hole there, and I'll just take the little angle grinder and round those out, and it should go popping up in there, no problem. Looks funny now, but just wait until we're done here. All right, so we're at the point now. So we groove that out, give that a a nice uh, kind of concave roundness for that to slip in there, nice and easy. So that, as you can see, that comes out around the front, and curls around there, which is good, I guess, protection-wise. Um, gonna listen to all the noises and banging that makes it won't be as fun, I'm sure. But um, maybe I'll. Uh, Maybe I'll just put a piece of uh, some window film wrap on here. Just heat it to there so it's not as tingy. I know on the X3 that one curls around there too. The other option would have been to have cut this off here and leave the mud guard there. But we'll uh, we'll see how this goes. Worst case, I can still always chop it at any time and then put a plastic plug on there. But I mean, I'm sure this does protect a bit on, on this corner chunk here. So we'll see how it goes. So I dry fit it. Everything's in nice and tight. So yeah, if you had a inch and three quarters, it'd be, you know, a sixteenth around the hole showing, which wouldn't be a big deal. I, I just like to stay tight. And then um, I just use the hole saw on a slight angle just to ream it out a tiny bit. So it's a nice tight fit. But... That's the way I like it fit, and then as you can see, this here more than likely wouldn't have uh, been cracked and bashed off while we were riding. Possible still, I mean if it hit up higher and punched it, yes it can still do that, but just to, to rub along things and not worry about it so much, it'll definitely cause a lot less issues. So, as far as will it protect kind of door-wise so much? Yeah, it, it almost, by the time you look at it, it almost comes out even with it. You're still going to get the odd bumpers across the bump here, but it should protect it from taking a heavier indented hit in a lot of places. So We'll see. I don't think it's worth for me to, to try to pull these further out like I, I was saying I might. I, don't, I just don't think it's so much worth it. If it had to come out, you know what? I mean, sure you could. If I were to pull it out, Honestly, I'd probably pull it out and slant it out about a good solid two inches. It would help for sure, but I think it's, it's pretty decent protection from there. Definitely beefs up the machine, I think, there compared to without. It just looks so vulnerable, like a big, huge plastic-ass bottom that could just get smudged. So as far as depth down low, where does it sit? According to the floorboards, for example, let's see how much lower. Well, depends. I mean, the plastic skid plates got different curves in them and whatnot. But as far as protecting the actual edge of the machine up there, yes, it definitely, definitely does. Definitely going to be hitting the bottom of that tubing first, if um, especially if you're on your in your angles, off camber, hill slants, and all that stuff. Rumping and bumping, bumping over the rocks and the logs and crawling and stuff is definitely going to hit those first. So, okay, so we are officially on, super tightened up. Now that I am tightened up, it did suck it in a little bit there, so it's not as quite flared out down there, but uh, it's still pretty good. I think it 
pulled it in about a half an inch there so everything was easy once everything was lined up cool thing about these inserts they give you right here is you see there's a little flange on each side so what this does it comes in from the back the holes punched out higher and then it drops and slides down in there so it's pretty pretty easy that way you don't really have to hold it from the back so that so you just feed your bolt through don't have to stick your hands back there and it finds it so that way it can't drop and fall out the only trick is with the center hole where we punched out under the seat so that hole's punched out there but there's a bit of gap between where you push it in and where it connects to the back and drops so there's a, a area back in there that if you don't hold on to it which is pretty hard to hold on to this slippery thing because it's feeding through a hole almost the exact same size there's a area where it can drop so if you don't hold on to it so what I did is what I did after dropping one down there which I'll fish out later on my own time won't drag anybody through that but I just put a put a self tapper screw in there so I was able to hold it with my fingers so that way at least when I punched it through I had I had something on it still it's not that far inward that it really has to go but just to have that there just just gives you a little more comfort you're not gonna drop it down there and in, in the you know when I did that the other one plunked in in two seconds so I could have fired the other one in there too probably right away but I was being extra careful which means you're gonna drop it so so I'll dig that out my own later I'll just kind of back this out Pack the machine out, start on side two after I find uh, my missing part. And that's it. So you can get them different colors. I know stock could have gotten yellow. I'm already pretty bumblebee-ish already. We uh, we will wrap this though and get it customized anyways. I'm gonna tone down a little bit of the yellow, but yeah, I like it. I think they're they're a good fit. They match up. They kind of match the designs behind there too with the the plastics in behind. So you can get in there and wash. Decent. Shouldn't catch much mud in there. But yep. Okay. So let's get to side two. All right. So I just pulled her out of the driveway here. Just to give her a, a look from far back. Out in the boat. So there she is. I give her a little polish too. Nothing fancy. Just a little wipe down. Some cheesy lipstick. Just so you can see how decent it looks. And uh, yeah, so there you go. There you have her. Yeah. Not bad. This side probably took, I don't know, by the time it started to finish, like 45 minutes to do, but there was looking around for which way am I going to tackle this, which way do I go about it, and just trying to figure out which way I'm going to do it, which way I'll save time, effort, the work, all that stuff. But I just didn't shortcutted anything other than the plugs were there to pop up top and the rest all slid in so there you go so a little project XMR West Coast XMR coming along here got the biggie horns on for heading into the summer they should have plenty of bite for everything got some mirage side got a little protection going on down the side. I, I really do wish those flared out a little more though. I might um, I might do some surgery to those. But I'll put the other one on for now. He's just kind of done. Anyways, yeah, there's, I mean, it looks fine with all the sliders. It's just, I like to know I'm protected, right? So there we go. Honestly, by the time I do this, this the other side, the other side's probably, I don't know, gonna take me like 20 minutes. Pretty much tops there. So, super easy. I know there's a couple other styles I saw, they had like the sheet metal, sheet metal kind of bent and flanged and whatnot, but it sits so tight. It really made me wonder how on earth am I gonna ever clean behind there. So, at least this one, these ones got a, an area down in there where you can get the hose or pressure washer or whatever and bonk it all out. So yeah, should help. 
protector machine now. So getting in and out and all that kind of stuff. A little less wear and tear down there, but boom. So if you're thinking about doing these yourself and you just want to go with this model, the BRP version, for the, the same ones, they go on the trail, the sport, and uh, I don't know what they, they call these, Sport XMR, XRC, XXC. I wish they had their own name for them a bit because it's, they're kind of 64 inch versions, but kind of call them the same thing, but they're a different machine, that's for sure. So there you go. Hope everybody likes that. If you uh, watch this video, maybe you'll be closer to you know an hour, and you'll have them have them both on. All right. Hope you enjoyed this. Just kind of chucking back retro here, just to let you guys know. So five sixteenths. Allen head for the upper center bolts, and a 14 mil socket there for the uh, two outers on the bottom. And then I didn't use any of these, totally were not necessary, but who knows for what reason they might have been, depending on what else was on the machine maybe. Um, that's optional. I just use a little headlamp or whatever down there so I can see around. So. Just to, if you have to, on an XMR, and cut out the little fender flare area there. Whatever, just, I just did this for a bit of a radius, like an inch and a quarter hole saw. This one here is an inch and three quarters for the holes. Gives you a sixteenth all the way around to play with. I used inch and five eighths and just kind of reamed it out a bit so it was a real tight, tight fit. And that still worked too. A little more work, but, um, so this is, uh after the job was done and I also used a chisel to take out the plug that uh, you're, you're going to find which I'm going to explain in a bit just down there behind uh, the inside of the door for the top bolt so all in all I just finished the other side right now and this one was 15 minutes so honestly by the time you get your tools get that stuff ready whatever the works works half an hour for the two of them but by the time you get all your stuff out and get ready and all that and take your time and watch this video you're probably going to be a good hour throwing throwing a set on hour hour and a half take your time do it right you only kind of get one hit in plastic right so yeah it wasn't a big deal um if i had to rate this one out of a five for easiness honestly it's, it's got to be a four and a half four and three quarter out of five for anything i've done before on all these guys so have fun don't be afraid of doing it you can do it trust me